Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates for April 14th, 2022. Welcome back to Simple Cyber Defense. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about honey traps and the effects of them and how to avoid them. I'm Carl. Hi, this is Ahmad. And so let's begin. So, so do you want to start off with the uh, topics of yeah. this choice? Yeah, I mean, it's a little sticky, but you know, yeah. we'll, we'll get it going. <laughs> uh, so, to to to, to start this off. Uh, we talked before about social engineering and just a, a quick reminder what social engineering is it's it's a term that is used for a very broad range of malicious activities that is accomplished through human interactions there is there is no technical skills that is needed it pretty much all it uses is psychological manipulation to trick the user into making a mistake, whether it's a security mistake or any type of mistake that would cause them to give away sensitive information. Um, and the thing is, with with social social engineering attacks, they happen in they don't have to happen in one step, right? They can happen in multiple steps. Um, the, the first step happens before any of the interaction happens, right? Which is kind of like a, a preparing the ground or or kind of a, a reconnaissance where an attacker would identify the victim. They would gather enough background information that they can uh, exploit, and then they select the attack method, right? And the honey traps are an attack method that we will talk about today. Um, the next step is to hook the victim, right? Uh, that's when, after after an attacker does all their investigation, they try to engage the target. Right. They'll spin a story, they'll use some side channels to get your attention. Uh, and then after they do that, they get your attention and they get you to interact with them. They take control of the interaction. Right. Um, and. After that, you know, the, the, the stage of play becomes uh, activated. Uh, that's when they start to um, expand their, their foothold on the target try to extract more information, um, try to, to gain more access either to more information or to um, you know, financial gains. Um, and then you know, it's part of like the, 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 the attack execution pretty much. Um, and whether that the execution of attack would kind of disrupt the, the life of the victim or, or uh, kind of like siphon money or data from that from the victim and then after that without without any uh warnings the exit right they remove all traces of their existence from your life um they cover their tracks and they kind of like try to you know some of them will bring it to a natural end and some will just be on an abrupt end right um and the honey trap is one of those techniques Right, and the honey trap is is has become more apparent and 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 more harmful um, with the, with the expansion of social media, right? Mm -hmm. And we we talked before in our previous episode about uh, grooming, right? And as, so grooming is directed towards children. Honey traps mainly they're directed to men. Uh, from people that they claim to be, you know, a female or an attractive female or a, or a maiden in distress, right? Um, so if, if you want to elaborate on that, Carl. Yeah. Um, so mostly those will happen to like uh, dating sites or things like that, where they will they won't necessarily come out and say, okay, I want your passwords or I want a whole bunch of personal information what they'll do is they'll just start chatting you up and maybe over a couple of months 
start building a relationship with you so that you think, oh, this person's really interested in me and they they really want to be with me, like they love me and all this. And then eventually they'll come to say, okay, uh, something happened and I need a couple hundred bucks to uh, either fix something or maybe they want to come out and see you so they need plane ticket money or something. But then once you give them their money, they just either disappear or they just make excuses why they can't come out or something like that to try to get more and more money. And then once you say, no, I'm not going to give any more money, that's when they exit and disappear. So in that aspect, it's mostly a dating sites going on. But this is not to say that females aren't uh, prone to this either. Mostly on that side, it's mostly military or people who are pretending to be military men. So they, oh, it's a trustworthy person because, you know, he's in the military. He's not going to, you know, deceive me and this, that, and the other. Is what they'll do is they'll actually take a photo of a real military person, take their name, and just pretend to be them. And the same thing with the picture of the females and just pretend to be that person. They're not really that person. They're just out there trying to get you to fall for that persona that they created for you so that they can gain your trust and then eventually take the money that they can get out of you. And then once you stop, they disappear. So with that said... That's just like one aspect of that. There is actually another one I think is starting to become more and more of a problem, mostly in Facebook, which I would say where people are creating duplicate friend accounts and then giving you requests, say, hey, either saying that their other account's been hacked or just not even giving any explanation and just try to send a friend request to you and it looks really legitimate because it's their actual profile picture or maybe a different picture of actually them with their real name but the difference is once you accept that friend request now they have access to all of your data on the Facebook and the reason mostly these fake accounts get created is to get access to your data so that they can either try to get social engineering against you so that they can get passwords and other things from you or guess them based upon the information that you're sharing on Facebook or they could try to trick your other friends into accepting the request and then they may be more prone to clicking on a link through a message because they think oh it's my friend he won't just send me something that's not legitimate so, you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, that's uh, that's also another another avenue that you know an attacker would take, which they, they just um, rely on the good nature of people, right? Mm -hmm. And they try to take advantage of that. And again, just like I mentioned earlier, it's just a psychological game, right? Um, and the, the first step, the first step to kind of protect yourself from that, right, is number one is to know your enemy. Right. And watching our podcast and, and our videos, um, that's a good that's a step in, in the right direction. Um, there, there is a few. Uh, a few things that you can look that you can look out for. Right. After after you educate yourself. You say, OK, what can I do? What, what, do what, what can I and how can I protect myself? Well, number one is look at the profile picture. Right. Mm -hmm. The profile picture looks like it's something that is that's a stock image or it looks like it's a professional picture or like a celebrity picture or a no picture at all. Right. Um, that's, that should be a red flag. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, another thing you can look at is the number of followers or friends that they have amassed and over what period of time, right. If they have way too many or they have way too little, both of these should be a red flag. Or if they have right? too many over a short period of time also. 
Right. Too many over a short period of time or too, or too, or too few. If it's a brand new account, mm -hmm. right. Why is this person trying to, you know, to Reach connect out. with me? Yeah. Um, and then also if, if they seem like a least likely connection, mm -hmm. you put it, you know, in, 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 if it's, if it's not some, if it's not someone that would interact with you on, you know, in normal circumstances, yeah. Uh, if there's somebody like, or on LinkedIn, if somebody on LinkedIn and they have nothing to do with your industry, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, why, you know, why are you, reaching if I, if I never met you, why are you reaching out to me unless you want to learn from me, but we should have like some groups in common or something. Yeah. Right. Uh, so it, it, these are the things that, that you kind of like, we need to be on the lookout for when we're to avoid those honey traps. Um, and, and one of the things that I didn't talk about you know we talk about it on a, from a personal level on a small scale but there are known instances where um, honey traps were used on large scale like even in military operations mm -hmm. right and these are documented and if you do a quick google search you'll find you know like it's a spy versus spy world right and and yeah. and that's pretty and, and and it was used and it's still being used in 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 warfare mm -hmm. um so it, you know the, the techniques are out there there's there are people out there that that's their job that's how they you know they pay their bills and just number one it's just be aware right be aware for yourself and then to, to kind of tie this in with the with the grooming and the cyber bullying that we talked about before see who your, your, your children are speaking with, right? Who they're communicating with online. Um, you know, if you're, if they have social media, be on the same social media platforms that they're on. If you see who they're interacting with, um, see who they're becoming friends with so that you we don't allow this to grow and, 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 you know, grow into something that's more destructive than it should. Yeah. And then on a note where you're saying about, uh, the stock images, if, you really want to check that image, you can actually download the image, go to Google image, upload that image and search the image. And then Google will search through the internet and see where that image also appears in different websites. And a lot of times if they are using like a stock photo or, so, or stolen photo from somewhere else, it will show up saying, okay, this is also in the stock library here or these other websites. Or even sometimes they will actually be part of an article about a scam that's going on. Because I know... Recently, I got a text message from this one person pretending that it was like the wrong number and I saw a picture that they sent and what I did was I downloaded that picture, uploaded it to Google to see where where it would lead me to and it did lead me to many little articles about how this is just a scam, just ignore it and this, that and the other and if I hadn't gone through that extra step, I would have never known. I probably would have replied to it and then gotten into all sorts of trouble and who knows what would have happened after that. But because I took that extra step to search the image, I realized, oh, okay, this is what they're trying to do and just deleted the message and moved on my, on my way. Um, now, the Facebook one is a little harder because they're actually using the profile pictures of your friends, either using old pictures that they downloaded from their real accounts or whatnot. So in these cases, it's a little harder to kind of detect, but there are ways to uh, prevent being scammed in there too. Uh, the first one is to actually contact your friend outside of Facebook into a channel that you've already established with them, either through email or text message or something and say, hey, I got this request from you on Facebook. Is this really you? Yes or no? That extra step will actually prevent a, a lot of those fake accounts from gaining access to, you, to your information. I know it's kind of, it can be kind of, kind of cumbersome, but it's necessary to actually protect your data because your data is very valuable in this day and age. It's almost like gold almost. And once that information gets leaked onto the dark web, it's out there forever.
that's that's not, that's that's pretty good yeah. um yeah i don't have anything to add to that man right. that's, uh, so yeah just the best thing to do is like when in doubt err on the side of caution and just say okay this is probably a scam so i'm gonna not go down there especially when it comes to new friend requests from people that you don't know or things like like you're saying on linkedin there are some times where i get people who are in completely different bizarre industries who would never even reach out to a cybersecurity specialist and it's, and i'm thinking to myself well why are you who's a like a librarian or whatever wanting to connect with me as a cybersecurity specialist when there's nothing in common between the two. Sometimes there are right. people who generally do try to reach out to try to grow their network and just reach out to anyone to see who, who they can connect with. But most of the times this is more like a data harvesting so that they can say, okay, this person works for a pristine law office or whatever. Okay. Let's see if I can gain his trust so that I could then get him to give me information about the law office or give me another name of a person that I can send a spear phishing attack to or any number of things that may seem innocent to us. But for an attacker, it could be the difference between breaching the organization or not breaching. So a lot of the times you just have to really think, okay, what information do I have that may be used against me or my company or my family or whoever and try to just protect that as much as possible and just think before you accept requests or think before you try to just help someone out because like I said, not everyone is has the good intentions and i know it's kind of hard for some people but you just have to face the reality that attackers will take advantage of you and it's very important to protect yourself in this day and age i'm not saying that you can't trust anyone but just more like a as what's known as trust but verify kind of thing so is there anything else you want to add before we close? No. All right. Well, I think that was a good discussion. And like always, we look forward to seeing what happens in the next episode. And if you do find this information very useful, you can subscribe if you haven't already, like it, and share it with anyone who you think could use this information and be helpful for them. And if you have any topic suggestions, you can head over to the simplecyberdefense.com and fill out our form to make suggestions of topics that you want us to do. And we are open to any suggestions. And with that said, we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates. Join us next time when we dive into more security issues and make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Plus, if you have a topic suggestion or want to support the podcast, stop by our website at simplecyberdefense.com.